Good day, YouTube. There is a new big patch in Tarkov that just went live. And I'm going to go through the patch notes and I'm going to show you in the game the actual new features. So first of all, there is a new PvE zone offline single player, which means if you are a PvE enjoyer, you can instantly get into PvE raids if you play as a solo, if you don't play with friends. Uh, that game mode is going to be launched on your PC, so you're not going to look for the server for like 5 or 10 minutes. You're going to be instantly launched into the game. So that's the first change. Uh, wishlist mechanics. Players can now add an item to one of the several pre-created wishlists. Items added to the wishlist are displayed in a separate section of the handbook. People don't really use handbook. Um, so yeah, they'll have visual differences and uh, blah, 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 blah. You can also add those items needed for the hideout to the wishlist. So how does it work? You right click on any item in existence, for example, on the helmet, and you add it to the wishlist like this, tasks. So right now the item will be highlighted in blue. And there is a small little symbol in the bottom left that shows that it's for the tasks. Um, you select yourself if you want to highlight it for tasks, equipment, hideout, or other, or whatever, or butter. And this is the symbol that will be displayed at the item. And whenever you're in the raid, whenever you search for items, whenever you look for items, they're going to be highlighted as well. So while playing the game, you will know if you need this item for the hideout, for the quest, or for anything else. All right. In-game feedback surveys. Edit a community feedback service system with the game available at the service tab in the bottom menu. Completing service helps improve the quality of the game based on the community feedback. Players can earn in-game rewards for completing service. All right, so if you look at the bottom of the screen right here, you can see a service survey button. You click on it. Right now, there is no service at the moment, but I assume whenever BSG bring a new survey is going to be um, highlighted, like for example here, a green Green number will be above it. You'll be able to click on it, complete the survey, literally like a multiple choice question, and get some rewards, maybe like 50k rubles, I don't know, or like something like this, something along those lines. AI adjustments in PvE mode. So um, AI PMCs now pick up items, loot crates, and bodies, trying to choose more valuable loot. So PMCs will be juiced up when you kill them mid-raid in PvE. They can also pick up weapons and equipment, and if they find better equipment, they will replace it with it. AI PMCs can travel to uh, can travel all over location. They build routes to points of possible loot concentration, and bots move in tactical formation. When they reach the destination point, they collect loot, and then they can wait for enemies for some time, setting up an ambush. AI PMCs can now extract from the location if they have collected enough loot or enough time has passed since the start of the raid. Also, AI PMCs can now sprint more often when moving in the open terrain. AI PMC level on beginner ground zero will be limited to level 20. All the AI will now react to the enemy if information about them uh, come from any nearby bot. For example, if you're spotted by a bot and they yell, all the bots, regardless of the faction, will hear it and decide to move in your direction. All scavs, sorry, AI scavs will not travel all over the location to search for valuable loot. Scavs are less picky about the loot quality uh, compared to PMCs, and scavs move uh, between potential, potential loot destinations in tactical formation if they are traveling in a group. This is the first iteration of AI improvements within PvE mode. In the future updates, we also plan to refine the tactical behavior of AI, as well as the interaction system between AI of different factions. In the future, net necessary mechanics will be moved to PvP mode. So all of this might move to might be moved to PvP as well. New tasks: added the nostalgia quest line uh, for the game for the game's life path available only to EOD users. So if you're an EOD enjoyer, if you go to proper, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there is a quest called the Good Times Part One. And ask you to eliminate PMCs using an M4A6B43 body armor and the Kiver M on factory. This takes us back to the days when M4A6B and Kiver were the only top tier, top tier loot, top tier weapons in the game. There was no other helmet than Kiver, and you could wear either Zabrala or Paka. That was the only choice you had. You either go naked with Zabrala or with Paka. So this is the beginning of the quest. I'm not sure what it's gonna lead to. Maybe it will lead to an EOD armband, uh, what BG teased uh, some time ago, as there's few parts of the quest. Uh, we don't know it yet, but yeah, if you're an EOD, enjoy this quest. Added a new quest line for obtaining Mark of the Unheard. This is the radio which makes uh, scabs friendly and they don't shoot you from like 60 plus meters allowing owners of any edition to obtain this item for the PvE mode. I think this quest comes from the fence, so if you check fence, there will be a new quest. I actually completed one of them uh, accidentally, 
uh, called Establishing Contract, reach level 5 standing with defense, and then he gives you a new quest, Friend Among Strangers, which asks you to kill PMCs without killing scavs, and I think slowly this quest will lead to you unlocking this radio, and you can use it in PvE mode. Another quest that we are getting is a quest line for obtaining extended PMC pockets, allowing owners of any edition to obtain this item. I am not sure which quest that is, let me find it real quick. I think it's uh, Ragman. The quest is called Invisible Hand. And you need to eliminate any targets that is using a 20 plus container sized backpack, basically a decently sized backpack. You kill 15 of those users and uh, you move on to the next quest. And I think eventually this quest line will unlock bigger pockets, what we all uh, really cherish. So if you don't have 250 bucks to spend on the Unheard Edition, this quest is for you. Just as for me, as I'm an EOD enjoyer and I don't have big pockets. Customization. Added the new outfits for Usex and Bear available for purchase for GP coins. Purchasing these outfits requires high standing with Wrath. So we we'll go to Ragman, we we'll go to services. There are some new clothing available. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. First of all, this one. You need level two Wrath for this clothing. You need to be level 18 and you need to pay four Lego coins. The only way to get Lego coins is to play arena, either do dailies or weeklies in arena. That's the only way to do it. Another way is to get LEGO coins is Twitch drops. So if you watch arena tournaments with Twitch drops on BZU's channel, you can get a LEGO coin as a legendary drop. So I actually really like those um, outfits. I really like those polos. They look really classy, especially if you change the pants uh, to the new pants. Looks really lovely. So this is the first polo for uh, Usex. Bears have similar polos, just of different color. I really like the second polo, if I'm honest, this one. This one looks so freaking good. And next wipe, I'll try my best to get six LEGO coins and um, Wrath on level three. And this is probably what I'm going to main next wipe as a top, because I just love it so much. And the third top is this, Usyk Dead Vector. It's a t-shirt with the skull. And actually, let me, put, let me place the gun so I'm... It's a t-shirt with a skull, night vision, and Ushanka, which says Vector on it. And you also have some numbers on your shoulders. And the back is clear. I'm personally not a big fan of this, but I mean, it's nice having uh, a big selection of different uh, drip you can wear. Quite nice. PvE profile wipe. So right now, if you want to, you can separately wipe your PvP and PvE accounts on the website. Some people were asking for it. Compensation for reporting players who violated game rules. Players will receive in-game currency compensation after the report that led to the blocking of a violator. Compensation comes an in -game, with an in-game message informing of a sus... Uh, thank you, thank you so much for a brand new Prime. I appreciate that. Informing of a successful report. Compensation for several successful reports will be combined. So overall, this is a really great change, but I have one thing. So if, if anybody from BSG is watching, I think this is not a good way to implement this because this will lead to players reporting literally every single player, hoping that they, that they get banned and they get something uh, in return. I think every single time you die to a cheater, you should get um, the compensation back, no matter if you reported the guy or not, because this system uh makes you report everyone like if the person is a little bit sus you think like all right i report him if he gets banned i get something good and people will report even legit players just for the sake of getting those items if a player gets banned like right now there is no reason to not report the players like if you report you're guaranteed to get something so i think overall it's it's, it's a good beginning that's what we asked for but compensation for, should be for um cheaters that are getting banned if they killed you no matter no matter if you reported them or not. Balancing changes, I'm not going to go through this. Uh, long story short, BSG increased the spawn chances of all the long range scopes on the maps. You can find them more often. And they reduced recoil of the following bolt action rifles, basically all bolt actions. I don't really know what the point of reducing recoil for bolt action is, because like you shoot once and then you have to ch do the chamber animation anyway. I think uh, it would be better if you give more ergonomics to bolt actions. For example, every bolt action should, re should receive like a 30 plus ergo. So the ADS is actually fast and it makes it more fun to play and more viable. Because right now you can just buy an M1A slap of voodoo on it and just shred everyone uh, on long distance. Um, so yeah, I, I hope uh, that the ergonomics for bolt action will be increased. And the list of changes. Fix the incorrect physics of character bodies and uh, loot objects in offline raids. 
fix the EFT and EFT Arena interaction UI when interacting with Rev. I hope it becomes less buggy and the items get transferred faster. Fix the cause of incorrect behavior of character bodies after death. No, our favorite ragdolls are patched. No more helicopter ra um, ragdolls. And fix several localization errors in the interface and tasks. And that's about it, more or less. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give this video a thumbs up to make sure that the YouTube algorithm is boosted. Leave your comments down below about what you think about this update. And uh, check me out on Twitch, where I stream daily. Have a wonderful rest of the day. And take care.